Sigma Gaming. And today I got some spoilers that I want to share with everybody. I was going to make this video a lot sooner. Um, I think I was going to do it on Sunday. But during Sunday, they had the um, Seattle Crystal Cup. And I decided, you know what, they might show some more spoilers. So let me not make the video and wait for a later date. And uh, hold and behold, they actually had, I think, three spoilers. I'm not 100% sure. But could, could have been two. I know they showed a couple of them, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about them later on. I'll, sh I'll show you in the video. What I want to talk about at the moment is that today they spoiled the Opus um, Opus 8 box. Uh, I'm not sure who's on the cover of Opus, Opus 6 box, but I'm going to put it up in the screen right now. I think it's probably like a Bahamut. Uh, maybe Neil Bahamut or something like that. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, if anyone knows who, I mean, what summon this is and, and what game it's from, um, you know, put it in the and drop a comment. Now, the first card we're going to be talking about today is I, I think his name is pronounced Yang Rosh. Um, if I'm butchering, let me know. And he is a one cost water CP backup. So this would be the first one cost CP that I've seen, you know, till today from Opus 1 all the way to Opus uh, 7. Because the only one we have is our Devokers and the Summons. But yeah, no, he has the same job as before. That didn't change. Uh, and he's still a backup. The original was also a backup. But the effect is when Rosh enters a field, choose one backup other than Rosh you control. Return it to its owner's hand. So this, you know, allows some very interesting combos with, with the Rosh. Um, it, it, it not only is it, you can use it with the uh, Sid from Final Fantasy 2, I believe, that came out in Opus 6. He, he allows you to search for any one, one cost um, backup. But there is a really interesting combo that uh, I came across. I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the only one that, that's seen this combo, but I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. What's interesting about this combo is that you can play her, bounce whatever character you want, you know, return whatever character to your hand, um, and then you can play the the Rosh and put her back into your hand, and then play her again, target the Rosh, put him back into your hand. You just keep doing this over and over and over. Essentially, I believe, if I'm doing the math correct. You can almost essentially draw out your entire deck, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but that's like one interesting combo that I came across. I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of them. Uh, being able to play the Raj and reuse your put and play effects like um, Sage, even the, uh, the Black Mage from Opus 2. So I, I think this card is going to be really good and uh, dangerous. So look out for that one. The next card on the list was Golov. Let me put him on the screen real quick. Hey, yep, Golov. So he's the same you know cost in the same element as before so you know he's still a 5 cp earth um he's also still a, still a forward same job dawn wars it looks like dawn wars again support uh, i talked about in the, in the other video where they had these sub spoilers where they only show you the silhouette they didn't tell you what the effect was or the cost or whatever um so now this you know now we have two earth dawn warriors 
So we're gonna have the, I think it's exit, exit or exit. Uh, I, I, I honestly cannot pronounce that. I'm sorry. It's a tough name for me to pronounce. But Gala's effect is Gala cannot be broken during your turn, which I think to me that's really cool and it comes up with some pretty nefty combo. Uh, when Golov attacks, choose one for you may pay two Earth CP. If you do, you uh, it, it must block Golov this turn, if possible. So he kind of like bullies your opponent, man. And he forces them to to block you, which I think is pretty interesting. I'm not sure what kind of combos you can do with that just yet. Like you know, forcing your opponent to to block you but I, I think it's pretty cool that there is a opus 2 card uh, I, I don't remember the name of it I probably should have looked up the, the card um, he also had a you know when he attacks you have to block him so that's that's pretty cool you know Galif has a similar effect to, the, to, to that dude um, also Galif has a special ability called stop choose up to two forwards they cannot attack during this turn which I think that's really good uh, and it helps you stall so if your opponent you know comes out and has some kind of aggro play uh, you can prevent them from attacking you you know so I think that's really good and he's a 9k I think he had the same stats as before so the, the other guy was also a 9k um, this is one of the combos that I actually came up with well, not combos, but obviously this is the given. Uh, the Kelgur works with the the Galaf, so so far it's looking like Lightning Earth will probably be what the Dawn Warriors are gonna be. Uh, I I hope we get you know um, Dorgan to be a, a Lightning Ford. I highly doubt it's gonna happen, but uh, you know you never know. But here's the combo I was trying to say: uh, the Hecatontra. If you do this uh, during your turn, you can essentially deal 9k to somebody and not take any damage at all. I, I think that's really cool. I mean, you still take the damage, but you, you, you can't be broke, right? Uh, but that, that's gonna be hella dope. Let's go. The next card was a Cactar Conductor, I believe. Yep. Let's see what he does. Use a um, two CP backup, and he's from the World of Final Fantasy, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, I wonder if some of the other World of Final Fantasy cards are gonna get some kind of support. Um, but yeah, the effect is when Cactar Conductor enters the field, choose one Ford uh, during this turn. The next damage dealt to it becomes zero instead. So you can play this, target one of your guys, and then you can ask you can play the Hecatontra that which is right next to the card. And essentially you take no damage. So that's another you know combo for the Hecaton. And then it has a doll ability, which is two win doll it, put Cactar into the break zone. As your cost, choose one forward during this turn, and the next damage dealt to it becomes zero. So, you can also do this during your opponent's turn. So, you can just, you know, play this, and then on your opponent's turn, like after you, you're able to uh, tap it, you can you can use it, target your guy, your guy's not gonna take any damage, and then you can Hecatauncher. Um, again, these are just small little combos. I, mean, I know there are a lot more things you can do with it. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, overall, for a 2 CP, this is not a bad card. Uh, I don't care what anyone says, I think this card is really good. And uh, I hope it sees play. The next card we have is Tama, which is another Wool of Final Fantasy card. And just like the first Tama, it's a 2 CP backup. Your ability is 
pay one earth, dull it, put Tom into the break zone, choose one, cate uh, one category, Wall of Final Fantasy card in your break zone, add it to your hand. I think this is really interesting because you can now pick up summons. Not only that, you can actually use that to pick up the Tom, uh, not the Tom, the, the Cactar Conductor. But I think it's, uh, you know, um, it'd be a lot better with some of the older cards. Like, for example, this one right here. The Mysterious Woman. I think with all these new Fon World of Final Fantasy cards coming out this set, I think it might be a lot better. And I wonder, are we going to get a new land? But uh, overall, I, I, I think... The Tom was a good card. Um, still a little too soon to say for sure, but we might be getting a lot more Wolf of Fun Fancy cards that, than I thought we would. Okay, the next card we have here, I believe, is X Death. Now, there was a lot of hype on this card when it got previewed. Um, I think the card is good. I, I, I think it's, you know, it's going to be a strong card. I don't think it's going to be one of those, like, overpowered card. Because you need to have specific amounts of backups for him to work accordingly. But being able to uh, take your opponents forwards from their break zone is pretty dope. So Exodus is a 6 cost backup. Um, Final Fantasy V, obviously, and its effect is when Exodus enters the field, choose one forward from either player's break zone. If its cost is equal to or less the number of backups you control, play it onto your field. So that's what I mean by being able to take a forward from your opponent's break zone. Uh, and it's not only just your opponent's break zone, but it's anyone's break zone. So. Uh, you know, there are some neat combos you can do with the card. Um, I, I think it's going to be a great card. I think every lightning deck will at least play this as a 2 of. If you're playing mono lightning, I, I can see you playing this as a 2 of. Just being able to, to, you know, have three backups and then play the Exodus and target your El Cid. And get your L Cid and play. It's pretty dope. Not only just the L Cid, but you can get your um, Amons and some of the other cards that, that are heavily played in in mono lighting. So I mean, I, I think it's gonna be a good card, and it has combo potential with the Rosh that was previewed earlier. You know, the one CP. So if you're playing like a lightning um, water deck, you can play the the Rosh. And target the exit to get the exit back in hand. Play the exit again, and Exodus can target your um, Layla, who's a four CP. So if you have the four CP when you play him, you can play the Layla. Layla plays the Vikings. You draw some cards. So it's, I mean, it has some really good combo potential. Um, still too soon for me to say, oh, this card is amazing, like broken. I have to see what other cards are in in the set. But uh, a great card, man. Next card is Soul. Now, I always thought that Soul was from Final Fantasy Dimensions, but I think he's from Final Fantasy Legends. Uh, could be wrong, but yeah, Soul's a two two class fire, forward, Warrior Light. So we have another Warrior Light target. Um, and in our last video, we talked about Bart's being a Warrior Light, uh, how he can combo with the wool. And his effect is if you control a job warrior light for other than soul, soul gains 2k power and haste. Uh, I think that's really good, man. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it's really good. Um, let's see what I have here. So, just having the soul in the Luna makes it that soul is a AK with haste. Two cards. 
I, I think that that's that's obnoxious. Not to mention, I uh, you know, you can play it with the the wool, uh, the promo that just came out. And if you have the LeBlanc with the arch, not arch, sorry, Luna, you can have a 9k <laughs> with haste. Uh, that's insane, man. <laughs> I think this car is going to be great, and uh, I think something that Fire was lacking uh, definitely is going to be a big boost for Fire. And this is the wall I kept, I kept mentioning, so. Um, you can put him in play with the wolf if if will get sent to the break. So not only that, you know, he is a warrior light. So when wolf is put in play, you can look at the top five, and if, yeah, if so happens to be in the top five, you can add him to your hand. Uh, and it's also working in conjunction with the lunex because they're all warrior lights. So I, I think that's going to be really good. The uh, next card I want to talk about is a promo. Or the next promo that's gonna be coming. Out. I don't. I don't. Maybe it's not the next promo, but it was. It was a promo that was announced, and we at the time when it was announced, we were, we couldn't talk about it. I know a lot of people know about the promo, uh, and I'm talking about March. Now I, I wasn't a big fan of this card all, all too too much because the thing about the March is that. People see it coming, and so they, they, you know, they don't really block you. Like you really want them to block you. Want you want them to block you so you can use it and kill their their forward. Uh, but most of the time, they don't block you, and, and and they rather take that damage. But I think because of the new um, Gullif, he might be a lot better now. I know he works well with cards like, uh, man, I, I, I'm really terrible with names. The two cost fire, um, type zero that dulls and, and forces people, forces a guy to block. Uh, so yeah, no, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't a big fan of them picking this card. But I think the art's great. I think the the promo art is uh, pretty pretty cool. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Final Fantasy Tactics are, events. I I know the kid in the wheelchair was the one that was getting picked on and bullied, and he's the one who opened up the book. The uh, I think the Final Fantasy book. I'm not I'm not 100 sure what the title story actually really is, but it's something something of that of that nature. Um, wasn't a big fan of the series. Or I, I would not say serious, but I love tactics, but I wasn't a big fan of tactics advance. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but I just hated the judge mechanic. I couldn't stand that mechanic. But um, I wonder if, if Mark's going to be a lot better, and in, in future in the future set, uh, I can definitely see him being played in conjunction with the arc and the uh, soul that just got previewed. So. Yeah, these are all the previews that we have at the moment. Uh, well, you know, once I get some more previews, I'll make some more videos. But uh, other than that, this is Marvel Sticking Gaming. Adios.